The last video about the IMU based block detector unit triggered quite some comments and questions about trackside sensors and related topics. If you are interested in layout automation, this is an important subject with unfortunately only limited support by the mainstream manufacturers and their products. So I decided to use this video to answer some of the questions and discuss trackside sensor applications on a layout. Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I'm Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use the Internet of Things along with sensors and microcontrollers to control a model railroad layout. So, get on board! The train is leaving the station. One of the viewers of the last video left this comment. I have just come into this hobby at the late stage in my life. The aim of my first test layout was to learn and understand many things. The part I am surprised about is how block detection appears to be at its early stages. I think that's probably a good starting point for this video. If we have a closer look at the offerings of the mainstream manufacturers, we see that practically all of them provide some sort of block detection system along with the possibility to communicate the block status, being free or occupied, to the control bus and an attached computer. And while this is a good start, it is not good enough for many applications. And for this reason we see a good number of smaller manufacturers offering their own flavor of detection system, usually consisting of some specialized electronics hardware combined with some sort of proprietary communication or local interface to connect LEDs. And what a surprise, also these smaller providers in most cases offer just their own flavor of current based block detectors, just as the mainstream manufacturers do. And then there is a third group which I would call the Makers Group. Those are people who experiment with various technologies like fiber optics, RFID, magnetics and much more and come up with new types of sensors and then quite often make a video, like me, about it and post it on YouTube so that the whole world of model railroaders can applaud and ask what the heck should this be good for? To me, the point is this. Mainstream providers as well as smaller manufacturers play it too simple when the only thing they offer is a current based block detector that only can detect a locomotive in a particular area but not at an exact location. Yes, this information is good enough to control signal aspects but for stopping a train repetitively at a specific location, say 3 inches in front of a signal at the end of the block, it is not really valuable. And on the other hand of the spectrum, there is a variety of ideas and technologies creative people are experimenting with, but there is a lack of concept for integration and no established best practice for what to use, when and how. Because when you watch these maker videos, one thing becomes clear. There is no single sensor technology that meets all requirements and fits all problems. But there are tons of possibilities. And another thing becomes obvious as well. Over the course of the last 15 or so years, huge progress was made in sensor technology. And thanks to high volume products, in particular smartphones and to a lesser degree drones, many of these technologies have entered a price range that makes it interesting for us model railroaders. But so far this has not really changed the way how we do our hobby. So in this video I am going to have a look into sensors that can be used for layout automation, meaning automated train traffic and the like. At least so I thought when I decided to make this video. But when I started digging and doing research I found more and more aspects and all of a sudden I had material for what feels like videos for the next two years or so. Now don't worry, that's not the way it goes. But I will do a small series so that I can break down the complexity of the topic in manageable chunks. 
or as the saying go, how do you eat an elephant? Bite by bite. The scientific approach to get a handle on a complex topic is to start with a problem classification and I think that also in this case it is a useful approach. So let's get started. What we are trying is to get a handle on control devices, which really consist of two groups, sensors and actuators. Sensors collect information from the layout and report it to a controller, which then calculates what needs to be done and sends commands to one or several actuators like switch drive decoders, signal decoders, relays and so on. But in this video I am focusing on the sensor side only. When model rail rotors talk about sensors on a layout, they most of the time talk about train detectors and I have no doubt that sensors that report train positions are the most important devices for layout automation. So they are in the focus of interest for this video. But there is a whole range of other possible purposes for sensors that can be used to control certain aspects of a layout like for example monitoring of track voltage, room temperature, light conditions for artificial day and night settings and so on. So how can we further classify train position sensors? A first approach we find in DCC Wiki as already discussed in video number 33. DCC Wiki breaks it down by accuracy, type of information and technology. In my opinion, this classification is too much oriented towards existing products and does not leave enough room for new technologies. So I propose a slightly different classification, starting with a criterion that is common in the classification of prototype railroad sensors, track side versus train side. Train side sensors, to my knowledge, are sort of unknown in model railroading, but in my opinion there is huge potential. Just think about the possibilities if there was something like a GPS device built into the locomotive, ideally integrated in the decoder. It would periodically send exact location information and we could get rid of all those wiring intense block detectors and the like. And we would have information by the inch not just by the block, allowing for more advanced prototype-like control concepts like moving blocks and dynamic route reservation and so on. And best of all, such a system could be used on a temporary layout without any wiring, first to draw a track plan map and then for running the trains. Ok, yes, call me a dreamer. So for today, trackside sensors are the way to go. And the next important classifier is what DCC Wiki calls location accuracy with the options block detection, location detection and proximity detection. And while I agree with the intention of the criterion, I think the terminology and the options should be changed. First, there is no need for proximity detection as it is just a specific technology of location detection. DCC Wiki uses the example of an inductive sensor which detects metallic objects that are within an inch or so from the sensor. That really is a location sensor with just a slightly longer range than for example an optical sensor with a range of just say 10 mm. But that is not a fundamental difference. So the two remaining criteria are block and location and I prefer to label them in area and at point, because this expresses another important characteristic of this classifier. In area, detectors are static level detectors, which indicate that something is in the area or in the block without knowing where exactly it is. At point detectors, on the other hand, describe an event like a train is passing right now at this location. And this differentiation brings me straight to another comment to the last video. On your detection circuit you only show when the train is heading towards the sensor. This is not useful in real world. How would you use your sensors on a layout? You're right, the IMU sensor shown in video number 36 is an event sensor. It just reports axles going by 
But in order to do block detection, we need to know the number of axles that actually are in the block. So there are two preconditions if we want to use event sensors for block detection. A. We need a counter somewhere in the system that keeps track of the numbers going in and out. And B. We need to know whether the detected axle is entering or leaving the block. So the detector also needs to provide the travel direction. And since blocks are connected to each other, the same count usually means the axle or the locomotive or the train, whatever we detect, is leaving one block and entering another. We for sure will come back to that when we talk about the communication between sensors and the control network. The final criterion for my classification is technology. And of course, each technology comes with its own set of technical characteristics. For this video, I am just giving you this list of technologies that are available or thinkable. Not all of them are commercial products though. In the next video of the series, I will go into some of the technical details and show examples of currently available products. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to make sure you have a premium seat when the next video comes out. Here is a summary of the learning points so far. All mainstream DCC manufacturers offer some current detectors for block detection. For real layout automation, a more diverse range of sensors would be desirable. For this reason, we find numerous homebrewed solutions to solve specific problems, but in general, they lack integration with mainstream systems and their control buses. Sensor technology has really developed over the last 15 years, so it is time to make use of it on our layouts. From a technological point of view, it is important to distinguish between event sensors and level sensors. A level sensor can be as simple as just reporting occupied and not occupied, or it can give a count of rolling stock or count of axles in the block. Event sensors should report a count of events as well as the direction information to allow for integration of the event into a status report. And that's it for today's video, but there is more to come. Please leave me a comment if you agree or disagree with the sensor classification presented in this video. Also, feel free to suggest other technologies you'd like to see added to the list. If you find this video useful or at least interesting, please click the like button below as it helps to promote this video and the entire IOTT channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.